Heim Bloom out after four years with the Red Sox. We talked about it yesterday. News breaking just as we were on the air. Big news at a big time franchise. What is happening in Boston? Let's do some big picture digging in. And let's start with the issues that were immediately facing Heim Bloom when he was hired in October 2019. He had three major headaches upon taking the job. One, Mookie Betts was going into the final year of his contract. Two, Chris Sale was starting year one of a contract extension, and he was already a damaged pitcher. And three, David Price was also beginning his descent, coming off a season with an ERA over four. So I want to put it in front of you so you can soak it all in and look at it. It'll just sink in better. Take a look at what we have. 30 a year. 32 a year. Even at the time, you had to know that these guys were about done, diminished assets. If you're saying we didn't know that at the time, you should have. I saw it, and this guy, he's making $27 million a year, and you have to trade him. Heim Bloom inherited these three things, and he would essentially never be able to overcome all three. You can say Bloom did not get enough back from Mookie Betts, but remember, he didn't just trade Betts to the Dodgers. He got David Price to the Dodgers, too, off his books in the same deal. That brings a very different yield. So, yes, Verdugo, Wong, Downs, we hear those names. Not enough, right? But David Price had three years and $96 million left on his deal. And sure enough, in the four years after the trade, Price pitched just over 100 innings, not even effectively. They paid down some of that deal for the privilege, but they were able to get out from under the Price contract. I want to point something out. Everyone says they want stars. You have to sign stars to win. I hear it on our desk all the time. I disagree. The single most crippling thing for a baseball team is an aircraft carrier contract for an aging, declining player. It's the cost, and it's the opportunity cost. The Yankees, the Angels, the Padres, they already have too many aircraft carrier contracts. The Rangers, it's coming soon, same thing. That bill comes due. Ask the Red Sox. Yes, there was success in Boston under Heim Bloom. Vault ahead to 2021. The Sox still had Xander Bogarts and J.D. Martinez, but Heim Bloom had made deals for Hunter Renfro, Kike Hernandez, and Kyle Schwarber. Remember that? That club won 92 games. They beat the Yankees. They beat the Rays, and then they lost in six to the Astros in the ALCS. They were ahead in that series, by the way. That was a good season. But look what happened along the way. The payroll in 2019 was number one in Major League Baseball, $236 million. You scroll down, 2020 is a short year, scroll down, 206, and then 181. 50 million lower, 12th in payroll by this year. That was the lowest payroll ranking in the John Henry era, the new ownership group that had so much success. But I do want to point something out. As much as I'm saying that the Red Sox are down in payroll, here are all 30 clubs in their payrolls, in order. Red Sox are at number 12, right? Right around their neighborhood, got the Rangers, Giants, Cubs, Right there above the Astros and the Cardinals, let alone there's the Brewers at number 20. You take a trip down. Diamondbacks, competitive. They're all right, let alone 28 and 29. Rays and Orioles, right? The Red Sox aren't on an austerity budget. Uh, yes, they've been left in the dust spending-wise by the Mets, Yankees, and Padres. But what do those three teams have in common? They're not going to the playoffs either. Mets, Yankees, Padres. Spending money quickly is not the answer. So where did it go wrong for Bloom and the Red Sox? Here are the top salaries. Let's check under the hood for the Red Sox this year. Start Chris Sale, 27.5. Brutal. Not Heim Bloom's fault. Story, 20 million a year. That is his fault. That didn't work. Devers is your foundation player. That's fine. Look at this, though. The rest of it. Yoshida, good international signing at 15 million a year. But look at the age now. Kenley Jansen, Kluber, J Justin Turner. Adam Duvall, Chris Martin, talking 35, 37, 38, 34, 37. Some of these guys have been good, right? They've had good seasons, but what are we doing? All these guys can play. They are good, but 37, 37, 38? This is not recognizing reality. You're not winning this year. That should have been obvious. And that's about 70 million on guys who will not be a part of your next pennant winning team. And between your old guys and Chris Sale, that's almost $100 million just spinning your wheels. You have to recognize who you are and where you are. The Red Sox have had trouble accepting that. The baseball world has changed since John Henry came in, hired Theo Epstein, and brought in Bill James himself. That's part of Boston lore, a glorious part of their history. But now, everybody's smart. Other clubs are willing to spend right along with you. 
you're not going to dominate the way you did every single year. Trying to dominate and win, quote unquote, every single year, full throttle, leads to a cycle of losing. That's the problem. What's the solution? What should you do now? Well, one, they have to lock up their young players. Anyone that starts for you for a couple of years should be extended. They didn't get bets early enough. They got to Devers late, had to overpay. But that's all right. He's your guy, and it's psychologically better to overpay your own guy who was already underpriced when he was on the way up, right? They also failed to keep Bogarts, but the Padres probably did them a favor. You want a 40 and a 41-year-old shortstop? No. Either way, you're either winning or you're building. You think you can do both at the same time? You can. You have to accept taking a step back for a year or two here and there. If the next general manager comes in and throws money at the situation, they'll be spinning their wheels for the next four years. They've had difficulty accepting that, and it's understandable because they've had so much success. But ownership needs to take a look at this. These are your last four general managers. All four won. Three of them won big, winning a World Series. Yet all four had their tenure end early. I'll say that again. All four had their tenure end early. You have to ask organizationally, why is that? You're winning or you're building. The Red Sox have been trying to do both at the same time.